Welcome and hallelujah, praise God. Today is the day of our Lord. Today's the 12th, it means authority. Of course, the ninth month means visitation. We're expecting God's going to visit you where you need him to be. In other words, we all have needs in our circumstances. It's now time to call on the, upon the Lord so he can fulfill our needs. Not what we want, our needs through him. Of course, you're watching the Marketplace Network. This is Prophetic Spotlight. Of course, I'm your host. I'm Dr. Ken. It's a very special guest, the doctor himself. Who else would I be talking about? The most learned, the most prophetic. Uh, he moves in signs and wonders and healing. He's one of our regulars here. This is definitely one of our best. Who is it? Dr. C. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Ken. It's one thing I do love about this program is there's such a variety of programs here. So even Thank though you. mine is, I think, somewhat different than the other ones. I think Absolutely. people should go check out. We just, uh, the channel just did one with uh, a, a woman that's an artist named Anne. And I think it's a great program. I think they sure. should check it out. I love the uh, the idea of prophetic art. And we actually have somebody up here doing that as well. Amen. So today, I felt like the Lord wanted us to talk about Sometimes we have opportunities to go certain directions, and sometimes the easy way is not God's way. Amen. So um, there's a proverb in our Bible. It's Proverbs 14, 12. And it says there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, that is the way of death. And so we want to be careful of that because, again, God's ways are not our ways. Many times, Isaiah 55, 8 speaks to that. And so um, there's this story in the Bible, and I kind of want to touch on it. It's out of Genesis, and it's Abraham and Lot. Uh, Abraham and Lot in Genesis 13, verses 5 uh, through 13, we see that these two guys, these relatives out there, they really got blessed by the Lord, so much so that their workers and the people that were with them were getting into some uh, disputes. And so <laughs> we'll just be Good nice word. about it. They were getting into some disputes, and Abraham was saying, you know what? We're too crowded here. We're going to have to split up. And so there was some options to choose certain pathways and he was going to allow Lot to make that choice. So if we look at Genesis 13, 5 to 13, this is what the New International Version says. Now Lot, who was moving about with Abram, also had flocks, herds, and tents. But the land could not support them while they stayed together. It's because God was blessing them a lot. And for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together. And they were quarreling between Abraham's herds and lots, just like I said. The Canaanites, the Perizzites were also living in the land at the time. So Abraham said to Lot, let's not argue. Let's not have all this quarreling amongst me and your people between my herds or herders and your herders. Uh, for we are close relatives. And he says, look at the whole land before you. He says, let's part company. Uh, and he says, if you go to the right, I'll go to the left. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. Now, here's the key verse. It's actually in verse 10 and 11. And I want you to catch this. Lot looked around and saw the whole plain of the Jordan towards Zor was well watered. He says it was like the garden of the Lord. It was like the land of Egypt. I mean, it's looking good. It's plush. It looks like, hey, man, that's where it's at. That looks mm -hmm. like comfort city. And so, uh, well, and so right. Lot says, uh, I want that. He says, so Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan 
and set out towards the east. Mm. Now, we're going to find out that this actually becomes Sodom and Gomorrah. So That's sometimes, right. many times, there'll be two pathways before us. And we'll look out. And we'll say, boy, that's the easy way. That looks like the, the pathway of blessing. It may be like for me, a church is running on all eight cylinders. Mm. It's a big church. Man, why don't I go to that church? This other church, this is a church plant. It's a powerful man of God over here, but it's a church plant. That's going to be a lot of hard work and stuff. If I go over to this church and I'm raised up, boy, I'm going to look good. And sometimes God wants us to take the harder pathway, especially when it comes to souls. Mm -hmm. It's all about souls mm -hmm. and our assignment for souls here as believers. Right, Dr. Ken? Teach it. It's power. Can I say one thing real quick? Yes. Now, remember at this point, the man of faith lets the cousin, his junior, he shouldn't. By the way, this is a word for you as well. Where you're going, I'm prophesying this, not many people will be able to go. The circle you surround yourself might not be able to go. Eventually, you might have to let him go. He should have never let Lot go with him. Second point is he chose him to be in the town under roofs. Abraham sent it under the tent. That means sky's the limit. Mm. And third and final point, like you said, it looked more plush. It was easier for him to go down there. But little did he know, it was all hell would go to come together. And because it's Abraham's anointing, just like your anointing, is keeping a lot of these people up. If you weren't there, it wouldn't be, the services wouldn't be as strong. Some of the meetings wouldn't be as powerful. Some of the things wouldn't happen as much as they do when you're there. Just like when we had you in our services here in Orange County, California, the words were sharper, crisper. People got healed. Everybody was talking about, they're still talking about some of the Zooms you did and some of the meetings and shows you did from uh, healings to words to direction of how the Bible really can help you. If you teach it right, it really comes alive and it's a guide to your life and it'll give you a footprint of where to take your next step. But all that said, I just wanted to say, sir, you are on fire. It is your season. It's time you take the authority and start going. Your thought, Dr. C. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Ken. So um, let's take a word picture here. Again, he's looking down on this land that's all plush, well watered. It's a place of ease. It's a place of comfort. He chose that way. And Abraham took the harder pathway. That's out in the desert. And the desert in that part of the world is a pretty scary place. If we have people watching that are from California, they may be from Palm Springs. That's correct. We may have people from Arizona, New Mexico, right. Texas, especially East Texas. You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. There's right. some pretty scary places out there. And most people would rather choose maybe... The Pacific Northwest only in the summertime when it's nice and in the <laughs> winter when it's gray and when it's rainy. It. But, you know, we're looking at it from this viewpoint. He's saying, wow, that's really nice down there. I can grow all these vegetables, have all these wonderful delicacies, all these things. And Abraham's going to take the tougher road. But we're going to find out that Lot gets in trouble by going down there. And in fact, his family gets injured in the process. And so a lot of times, even though there is a, a way that seems right to ourselves, sometimes the, the end thereof can be the ways of death. Peace and that. it was for some of Lot's family. And so um, I want to take a look at 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 7 and 8, because Peter, the apostle Peter, is going to speak about uh, Lot. And he said, uh, it says that God had to rescue righteous Lot, who was greatly distressed. The NIV would put it tormented. Lot was tormented. Well, what was he greatly distressed, uh, distressed and tormented by? It was by the filthy conduct of the wicked Good that work. were around him. So even though it looked like this great place, 
You know, if you talk to believers out there, we have a lot of people that are coming to faith and they've been chasing fame. They've been chasing money. They have a lot of money, but they'll mm -hmm. tell you it's empty. It's empty. In those places of riches can be places of torment. And That's so right. God sometimes asks us, and a lot of times, he wants us to step out of our comfort zone. I've spoken about that in the past. That's out where Abraham is. He's outside of his comfort zone out in the wilderness. And, and so the NLT would say that he was sick from the shameful immorality around him. So it was not a good place. And as it, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 7 and 8 says, God had to rescue him. But in the process, look what happened to his family. He lost his wife. He lost his brother-in-laws. And then his his daughters lost hope, so much so that they got him drunk and they thought that they would never find husbands. And they had an incestual relationship with Lot. His family was a mess because of the direction that he chose. It looked like a nice place. It looked like a life of ease, but that's not where God wanted him. Now, in Matthew chapter 7, uh, Jesus says something, and I do want to touch on the Greek here. I'm not going to throw out the Greek word, but I want you to know what it means. Jesus tells us in verse 13 that the word to enter through the narrow gate. He says, for wide is the gate and broad or spacious is the road that leads to death. That's not yeah. where we want to go. We want to go through that narrow gate. And this narrow gate in the Greek is only narrow because there's obstacles in the way. You know, sometimes when you choose God's ways, you're going to run up against it. It's going to look like there's mountains and there's obstacles in your way. But God is leading you this direction so that he can show himself faithful and create a testimony in you and your walk. And so Agent. sometimes we've really got to take a look at decisions in our lives. I know of um, my nephew who just came to the Lord. He was getting ready to move his family to Boise, Idaho and get out of the Seattle area because he wanted to go somewhere safe for his young family. And he even put money down on a house that was non-refundable. I think it was like a quarter of a million dollars. My oh, wow. nephew has a lot of money. He's in the fitness industry. And God gave him the big check, you know, and he walked home and he told his wife, we're not going to go. I don't think God wants us to leave. He wants us in this place where we're going to be stretched. And so this place where Abraham had to dwell, not in a place that looked all beautiful and stuff. And so his wife said, well, we're going to lose all that money. They never returned the money. Well, come to find out, he did get his money back. It was the one and only time that that particular contractor's ever given money back. All that to say, though, sometimes God's going to choose the more difficult path for us. Mm -hmm. It's not only for our good, but it's also for souls. We got to get out there and be the light and be the salt. And we got to get out there and help people as much as we can while we're here on this earth. That's our assignment. Hey Amen. What a word that is that everybody catch that, our assignment. And watch who we're with. That's another great point that you had. And our eyes sometimes think, oh, that's the better place. But is it? it, it this is just a powerful, powerful teaching here. You better listen to this two or three times when he, he gets into these they sound simple, but you got to really break down every element of what he's saying in every word so you can understand where he's going with it. And, and remember that time they were extreme. They said he was very, very wealthy. Lot was just wealthy. Abraham was very, very. So through yeah. his anointing, by I assume Dr. C, some of the people he's with, hang on to his anointing, even though he's very, very anointed. Some people might not be as anointed, but here and there, he's hoping to teach them up. And it's about the heart, you know. It is. Where he's going is God has chosen him to go. Not everybody can go at that level, but he can always teach people up and help them through where their need to be at. 
but not everybody can do like he does. But here's my point is these messages, I want you to go back and re-listen to some of Dr. C's and look at the different, he's building to something. Each one gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then he paints a picture of what we need to know. He started us really simple and early in the beginning. If you listen to some of his earlier teachings, he's got a book coming out. It's at the bottom of your screen. You'll be out here at the, uh, at the end of the year by Christmas time. I, I need you to pick that up. And real quickly, because of the expense, the time, the gospel's free, he will preach until his socks fall off. I'm telling you right now, I know this man, but he supports a lot of ministries. He goes to a lot of places that he doesn't even get paid. And he goes to a lot of places where he pays them not to speak, but to speak, help them learn, and he pays to help their ministry. So do me a favor. Let's do this right now. The bottom of your screen, you'll see there's a Zell account. Please, I'm asking to use it. Just if it's just, just I, I promise, if you're struggling with money, here's a man of God that's extremely anointed. He's prophesied a lot of things at a lot of ministers that I personally know of that finances started to come to them. Listen to what I'm saying. He doesn't say anything so this, he he acts like he's saying it matter of fact. No, you got to hang on to that because that's the word of the Lord for you. So listen to me. I would so, just try it. Just so ten dollars, whether it be twenty five, fifty, I don't care. Now some of you, if it's just, don't just give a tip to God. Stretch a little bit if it's a hundred, two hundred, five hundred, a thousand, whatever that might be. Now no amount's too big. I know there's a businessman. Listen to what I'm saying right now. That has a multi million dollar project. He doesn't have even three million. But he's got 500,000. I dare you. Believe God. Listen to the unction. If he's tugging on you, sow it. This man is worth it. And watch what God will do for you. But wait a minute. I won't have any money. Doesn't matter. You don't have enough money to finish the project anyway. What's the difference? But if you sow it, believe God. That's sowing and reaping, not buying and selling. That's God's coming. You have to support the ministers that he sent forth to teach you and help you. Now, how do we know what the word is? Faith is by hearing and hearing the word. We have to have a minister or a preacher preach it. That's who he is. He's come to the highest level of doctor's degree. He can prophesy and pray for the sick. I don't know what else to tell you, but I know this. If you'll have him come in, here's another one. You got to share this. Help your friends understand more. Well, my pastor doesn't talk like this. That's fine. I'm sure your pastor is a great man of God. But there's extended learning that he's done for 40 years, that it's deep. He really has got the grip on Hebrew, um, uh, the, the Greek, and he really takes it to a whole new level to break it down for you really to get it. Another thing you might want to consider, if you have tithing in a church, it's not going anywhere and you don't feel like you want it, you haven't been in church in a long time, tithe to him. See what will happen. Let him mentor you through these shows and through these books. And the last thing I'll say, and I'll shut up and let him pray for everybody. Listen to what I'm saying. Pastors, uh, Bible study, uh, people of leadership, if you need somebody to speak, no matter where it is, don't worry about the money. He'll just take an offering. He's not crazy. It's not. He never goes for money. He came down here and paid for everything. I'm telling you right now, he wouldn't take a dime from us. But he spoke everywhere, did everything, did all these shows. I'm just saying, it takes money to put the ministry out there. It's free to the gospel. I get it. But if you need somebody to do your Bible, I don't care how small you got three people. He did a few with us. He does large crowds. He does stadiums. It doesn't matter. Conference, he's really good because the anointing builds when he does the conferences. So uh, please, if you need help, don't be afraid. The email's right there on the bottom. Make sure you give him plenty of time. Don't tell him to come tomorrow. Give him some time mm -hmm. to get out there. But because he's is it took me two months to get him here. So it it just takes some time, but he will come if God is leading him. But one last thing, when you get him there, make sure you line up all your leadership because those are the people that are touching everybody, praying for everybody, and, and believing for everybody. Make sure he prays for each person, prophesies and anoints them for their double anointing to come out so they will be more active for those people. Doc, will you pray for us at the end to help the people out? for this financial need that they have. Yeah, so I would just like to comment that in my life, I've seen God open doors, crazy doors that I would never expect to even open. And so I believe in the financial realm, this can happen as well. I agree. Wild doors can happen overnight. Overnight, you I know, can I see you. 
your financial needs met. Teacher. Now, I had an opportunity, well, I was, with a ministry that was a large church, a well-watered large church, but I felt the Lord pulling on me to go to another ministry. So this weekend, I'm being installed as an executive pastor with the Vineyard Church up here Amen. in Federal Way. And these services will be held on Saturday, and you can catch them live if you want to watch them. I'll be co-pastoring it with uh, Dr. Aaron Winter. And so he does a lot of evangelical work through another ministry that we have, Hearts of Fire International Ministries. But, but all this to be said, if you, do, I agree with Dr. Kent, I don't need the money, but you need the breakthrough. And Amen. so, yeah, right. And so it's all about you. It's not about me. It's all about you. And so let's just pray for those people out there that you choose those right decisions, make those right paths. The thing that we were talking about, it starts at Proverbs 14, 12. There's right. a way that seems right unto a man, but sometimes that leads the wrong way. And so we want God's way for you. We want that pathway to be God's way. And many times it's going to look a little scary. It's going to look a little uncomfortable. It's not going to be that well-watered land. It's not going to be what looks to be an easy and comfortable pathway. A lot of times that leads us down the wrong path and to injury. We don't want that. So Father, right now, in Jesus' mighty name, for those that are watching this program, Father, we ask for your divine favor upon them in Jesus' name. Father, I ask and pray that you would lead and guide them in all things. We want to be led of the Spirit. Those are the sons of God. Romans chapter 8. Lord, we ask and pray for those people that may even be at a crossroad. And they're seeing two pathways. One looks real easy and comfortable. Boy, would I like to go there and get rid of the stress of life. Father, I ask and pray if that is not the pathway you have chosen for them, make it clear because most of the time God wants us to stretch us. Most of the time he wants us to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Just Amen. like the special forces that serve our country. Those men and women learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And we're in the army of God. So Father, we ask and pray for these people that you would give them the pathway, that you would give them a heart for souls. A lot of times it's just, we've got to get greater love going. We've got to move away from lovers of ourselves and lovers of money. Father, we ask and pray for these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Because of time, I want you to remember the Zell account, email. If there's something you're struggling with in the Bible that you quite don't understand, please let Dr. C help you through it. He's very gentle, but thorough and bringing it down to any level. Even children would understand what he's talking about. He's been doing this many, many years. It's time to really pull on that anointing and get that revelation. Till next time, the great Dr. C. I'm Dr. Ken. I'll see you next week on Prophetic Stuff. Thank you.